afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Who's Majesty. My name is Dawn Majesty and I'm your host. How are you? It's been a, it's been a while, hasn't it? Well, I'm here. It's good to be back. And um, how have you been? I hope you've all been doing really, really well. And we give thanks to Almighty God, our Lord and our Saviour, His Majesty. I want to give a shout out to Preach the Word Worldwide Network TV. They're doing an awesome job bringing the, the gospel of Jesus Christ to the ends of the world. It's a privilege. I do not take it for granted that I'm still here <laughs> on Preach the Word. Saturdays at 5.30 p.m. It's a privilege and it's an honour. Okay, so let's get right into it. Today, this episode, I want to talk about Moses and the Israelites. My question is, which one are you? Are you an, just an Israelite or are you like Moses? Now, what do I mean? Let's look at Psalm 103 verse 7 and that will give us the context of our discussion today. I'll be reading from um, the New International Version, the UK version, and Psalm 103, verse 7 says, don't mind my tatty Bible. Actually, a tatty Bible is good. It means that it's, it's been well read or you're making use of it. It's not just on the, on the, on the bookshelf gathering dust. Oh, my devotional book, Experiencing God Day by Day. I love this book. I, it never gets old, it never gets, um, I never get tired of learning uh, new revelations as I delve into it daily. God's always teaching me and revealing so much. Um, so the authors are Henry T. Blackaby and Richard Blackaby. So my question is to you, who is God to you? Are you like Moses or are you like the Israelites? Again, I read in Psalm 103 verse seven, it says, God made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. Now, what's the distinction I hear you ask? What's the difference? Well, the difference is God. Moses wanted to know who the God was behind the deeds, whereas the Israelites were happy to just receive the blessings, the deeds. You know, manna by day from heaven, they ate manna. Uh, in the daytime, nighttime, God blessed them with quail. They said they wanted meat. So God said, okay, you know, you have your quail, you have your meat. He, um, guided he, them and led them um, to the promised land uh, by way of a cloud during the day and fire by night. Now they were just happy with that. They were content. And sometimes we could be like that. We can be just content to pray and God gives us what we ask for you know, blesses us, and yet we don't take time out to know the, the God behind the blessing, the blesser. We pray, Lord God, protect us, protect our children. He gives us protection, and yet we don't take time out to know who the protector is. The Israelites experienced miracles and blessings of God, but never really knew who God was. Do we know who God is? We're just satisfied with the provisions of God, but never quite understanding who our provider is. He is Jehovah Jireh. They were blessed, just like many times when we pray to God and he blesses us. But do we just receive those blessings and go along our merry way and not even care to find out who our blesser is? Moses was not content with just being provided for like the Israelites. The Israelites just wanted to be provided for. Moses went beyond the provision and he desired, he sought to know who God was. So in addition to the miracles, he wanted to know who the miracle worker was. Okay, so Exodus chapter seven, verses eight to 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, when Pharaoh says to you, perform a miracle, then say to Aaron, take your staff and throw it down before Pharaoh and it will become a snake. Verse 10. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord commanded. Aaron threw his staff down in front of Pharaoh and his officials and it became a snake. Pharaoh then summoned the wise men and sorcerers. 
and the Egyptian magicians also did the same thing. By their secret arts, each one threw down his staff and it became a snake. But guess what happened? But Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Hallelujah. Yet Pharaoh's heart became hard and he would not listen to them, just as the Lord had said. Sad when somebody has a hard heart. Pharaoh had a hard heart and he had to learn the hard way, including the death of his son. That was an example of one of the miracles that, um, that God performed in the presence of Pharaoh and all the people. There, there's so many takeaways that we can get from this miracle. You one is, one main takeaway is that there are people or churches or things that can perform the supernatural. They can perform magic. It says that Pharaoh's uh, sorcerers and his so-called wise men threw down their staff and they were able, their staff turned into snakes. The second takeaway is that God is the God with a capital G. He is his majesty, hallelujah. He is the God of all gods. There is no power like our God. There is no name other than the matchless, above the matchless name of Jesus. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 7 that Pharaoh's sorcerers and his so-called wise men threw down their staffs and their staffs became a snake. Aaron's staff swallowed up, or Aaron's snake swallowed up all the other snakes. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter whether they were able to perform so-called magic. There is no power. There is no nothing. There is no source higher than our God. Hallelujah. And we have to be careful not to just be so thrilled and excited about miracles. We have to be careful because a lot of people are able to get miracles or do miracles, but it's not from God. The Israelites were happy to just to see miracles, but Moses wanted to see who the miracle worker was. Moses said, show me your ways. Moses says in Exodus chapter 33, I think, it says, show me, verse 17 to 23, show me your glory. The Israelites were happy to just plod along and receive their manna from heaven and their quail, you know, and to be just, you know, to see the blessings. But they didn't really know who the blesser was. It must really encourage God, actually, when his people, when his elect want to know him more, when they don't just grab and take the blessings, but they want to know who he is. They want to know who the miracle worker is. Hallelujah. He is his majesty. He you know, is. I am um, Saturday, just Saturday gone. I, um, I missed my cycling group. They went on ahead of me because I got there and I forgot my helmet. So I had to go back home and started out on my way. And um, there was a, a couple of guys actually, but one in particular stayed with, stayed with me and cycled with me. And we just got talking. And he's a lovely guy. And he um, was asking for my name and I gave him my name. And the next question he asked was, uh, when's your birthday? And I'm like, okay. He's like, what's your horoscope? Or he's, no, when I told him the day of my birthday, he um, immediately told me my, my star sign. And I said, oh, I don't really, you know, I used to be into all this star sign. And he was like, yeah, he's not really into it. But when he does read the, his horoscopes, they tend to come true. And I'm like, okay. And, um, you know, we didn't really go further into that discussion, but it, it brought to my memory um, a clip that I saw recently um, with T.D. Jakes, and he was talking about people praying to the universe. Are you, why are you just content praying to the universe when you can pray to the one who created the universe? Let's have a quick look. Praying to the universe. A few weeks ago, I set it off in this church serving communion because I started talking about you can't take communion if you're praying to the universe. 
Because the new thing now is we don't talk about God. We don't call his name Jesus. Now we're talking to the universe. You pray to the universe. I'm going to pray to Jesus. You pray to the universe. When you pray to the universe, you are praying to the creation. Why would you pray to the creation when you can pray to the creator? What's his name? What's his name? Jesus. So there you have it. What's his name? I'll be right back after this short break. Thanks. Follow me on Instagram, His Majesty Ministry, His Majesty Ministry, YouTube, Dawn Majesty, Facebook, Dawn Majesty or Dawn Majesty Roby. Um, what else is there? I can't remember. And also check out my uh, new business venture, Majestic Popping Crackers. Um, and that's on all the social media platforms too, under Majestic Popping Crackers. And Welcome back. What's his name? Jesus. What? Do we know who the miracle worker is? Do we know the person or the source behind our answered prayers? Do we know who our blesser is? Or are we just content with being blessed? Moses asked God to show him his glory. And such was the glory of God that Moses couldn't see the face of God. Because any of the glory of God is so magnificent, his majesty, that whoever sees the glory of God, whoever sees God's face, cannot live. That is the greatness of his majesty. Let's look at Exodus chapter 33. And then verse 17 says, And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked, because I am pleased. There we go. I am the Lord is I am that I am but God said to Moses I'm going to do the very uh, one thing that you ask of me you want to see my glory okay because I am pleased with you is God pleased with you is God pleased with me I pray so I pray that we strive every day to have God's approval let's not wait until it's that last day or judgment day that we start seeking God's approval. Let's let's work towards that. We're saved by grace, by faith in Christ Jesus. But also, there's a point where grace is not enough. If our life and our doctrine is not matching up with the word of God, if God is not pleased with us here on earth, he's not going to be pleased with us on the last day. Let's not be deceived. Nobody, Galatians 6, 7, I think it says, God will not be mocked. Nobody can mock God. God said to Moses, I am pleased with you. But God was pleased with Moses in Exodus chapter 33, verse 17. Because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. Wow. Hallelujah. God knows us each by name. He has us engraved in the palm of his hand. Hallelujah. Verse 18, Exodus 33. Then Moses says, now show me your glory the israelites were just content in receiving the blessings god i want this i need manna because i'm hungry god bread is not enough we need quail yeah and they were just happy to receive the blessings of god but not know who the blesser was 
Moses is like, God, show me your glory. I want to know more. I want to know the blesser behind the blessings. I want to know the miracle worker behind the miracles. Hallelujah. Is that our attitude? Do we want to know more of God? Do we want to know God's ways? God is so amazing. Okay, let's look at verse 21. Then the Lord said, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face, sorry, my face must not be seen. Wow. Such is the glory of God that you cannot see God's face and live. You can see Jesus' face. That's one of the first things people comment on, the ones that God is, you know, the ones that have been able to see Jesus and have given a testimony. They talk about his beautiful eyes, the eyes of love, the eyes of compassion. But we cannot see God's face and live. So yeah, Moses was like, God, I want to know more. I want to, I, I want to know your ways. Makes, but yeah. look at how Aaron's staff swallowed up the other, devoured all the other snakes. That is the, the God we serve, his majesty. He is able to wipe out all our enemies. He is able to scatter our enemies. He is able to, oh, devour, just like Aaron's staff devoured all the other staffs or Aaron's snake devoured all the other snakes. God is able to do that. God. So let's take time to get to know our Father, our Abba, Father, our Daddy, our Lord and our Saviour. Let's get time. Let's make time to understand the name that is above every other name. The God with a capital G. His name is His Majesty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, it's yes. from another source. Just like how Pharaoh um, called his sorcerers and his so-called wise men to do the same as Aaron did, throw down the staff and it turned into snakes. But guess what? God's staff, God's snake devoured all the other snakes. He is the God with a capital G. His name is His Majesty, the Sovereign Lord. Do we know his ways or are we just content with being blessed? Do we know who our blesser is? Do we have a story, story to tell behind the blessing? Do we have a story? Do we have experiences? Moses certainly had experiences, didn't he? David had experiences. Even Abraham had experiences. You know, because they had an intimate relationship with God. What does that verse say in Exodus again? It said, God was pleased with Moses. He says, yeah, I'm going to show you my glory. Even though you can't see the front of me, you can only see my back. I'm going to show you my glory because I am pleased with you, Moses. God, be pleased, be pleased with, with me. Lord, please be pleased with us. Let us not disappoint you. So, which one are you? Are you like Moses or are you like the Israelites? The Israelites witnessed so many miracles. They crossed the Red Sea. God turned the Red Sea into dry land. They crossed, they received all the blessings, the manna from heaven, the quail, all the miracles that they witnessed and yet they didn't care to know who God was. They, didn't, they were just content with being satisfied. They were content with receiving, just plodding along. But Moses needed to know who God was. Moses needed to know the miracle worker behind the miracles. He needed to know who the blesser was behind the blessings. He said in Exodus 33, Lord, show me your glory. Do we desire to know the ways of God? Or are we just happy to receive the, the blessings? Our prayers answered, but we don't take time out to cultivate a personal, intimate relationship with God. 
You know, in Exodus chapter 33, God says to Moses, I will do what you ask because I am that I am. But he also said to Moses, I'm going to do what you ask because I am pleased with you. Think about whether God is pleased with you. He loves us, absolutely. But surely we want him to be pleased with us too. Because when he's pleased with us, wow, we'll see his glory, hallelujah. Moses saw God's glory, hallelujah. But a lot of times we sit back and acknowledge God's activity in our lives. We see the miracles and our prayers answered. You know, but we never sadly come to know God himself. So, what's his name? What is his name? Jesus. Our Abba, our Daddy, our Father, our Lord, our Saviour, our Provider, our Protector, our Rock, our Fortress, our Counselor, our Friend, our Lover. So, which one are you? Are you one of the Israelites or are you like Moses? Do you desire to know more of God, to, to, to know God's ways? Who is God to you? Who is God to you? What are your experiences with him? Do you know him in a real and personal way? Or are we just happy to pray and God, I need this, that and the other? Whereas we don't take time out to find out who the blesser, blesser is behind the blessings, the miracle worker behind the miracles. Hallelujah. What's your personal experiences with God? Do you have any testimonies? Do you have any stories to tell? Can you encourage someone else? Genesis 22 verses 9 to 12 reads, So when they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, Abraham replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Hallelujah. Okay, let's look at verses 13 to 14. Abraham looked up and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide, hallelujah. And to this day, it is said, on the mountains of the Lord, it will be provided. But we're talking about God's ways. Are we like Moses who wanted to, to know more, to experience God in a real and intimate way? Or are we just like the Israelites who were happy to receive the blessings, you know, see the miracles of God, but not even care about knowing who the miracle worker was? You know, Abraham had an experience, didn't he? In this Genesis chapter 22, he had an experience. You know, we have all these songs, Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Do we know who God is? Abraham was able to call or, or, or um, appoint that mountain, appoint uh, a name to that mountain there. He, he built an altar and named it Jehovah Jireh. God showed up and showed out just at the right time when he was about to sacrifice Isaac to slay his only son. And God provided a ram for Isaac to, um, sorry, for Abraham to sacrifice instead of his son. So that was Abraham's personal experience, like, wow, this is what God did. Do we have personal experiences? What are your personal experiences? Can we encourage someone and tell someone that this is what God did? 
you know, guess what happened, blah, 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 blah. I was doing this, I was thinking, oh man, how I'm stuck here. And then God provided a way. Yeah. That's how Moses was. That's how Abraham was. They weren't simply just an Israelite who were happy to receive the blessings but not know who the blesser was. Do we know him in an intimate and personal way? Are you able to encourage someone by telling them exactly what God did, did for you? And then are you able to go beyond that, to go further, to say, yeah, you know, God works like this and he really, and I believe that God was thinking that and we should be able to say the character of God. Really, if we know him, we know the character and personality of our spouses or our family members or our friends. How much more God? Hallelujah. So yeah, so let's be like um, Moses and Abraham that had personal experiences with God. That they, were, that they sought to know who God was and, and their eyes and their minds and their thinking was just open to know more and more and more of God and God desires that specifically in, in, in Exodus 33 he said to Moses I am pleased with you and I know you by name there's so many blessings that come from God knowing us by name Father God we bless you forgive us when we just take from you and we don't take time out to know who is giving us. Forgive us when we receive the miracles and we don't take time out to know who our miracle worker is. Father God, we bless you. We thank you that this is the day that you have made. We thank you for your word that we are able to grow and learn. I pray this week, God, a blessing over my viewers, dear God. I pray this week um, that we can learn to go beyond the blessings and see exactly who our blesser is. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus. The matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Yes, we have a great one. Cheers. Bye for now. Bye. Mm -hmm.